They're very different devices, but they're both revolutionary in their own way. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. This is the BlackBerry Z10. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Let's put them together in a dogfight and see which one comes out on top. It's a dogfight battle between two devices that on the surface may look a little bit different, but what they're both trying to do is reinvigorate the market in a way. You've got the BlackBerry Z10 over here, the newest device with BlackBerry 10 from BlackBerry. It's no longer called RIM, it's just BlackBerry all around. So the Z10 is brand new with BlackBerry 10. Then you have the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 available on a bunch of different carriers in the US and around the world and really has revolutionized that large device category or phablet category or tablet phone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's really done a good job of revitalizing that. So very different devices when you look at them like this, but still really similar in a lot of different ways just in terms of their wanting to change around the market. And I'm going to go ahead and change this while I saw that to five minutes, and we'll back right back out uh, of that. Specs-wise over here, 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM. This is BlackBerry's attempt to get back into the market and compete with iOS, with Android, and with Windows Phone, and they are going, and they're going hard all around. So you got that 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a 1800 milliamp hour removable battery, an LCD display, a 4.2 inch LCD display that is HD, 768 by 1280 pixels, and 4G LTE and markets it support it. So over here, Samsung Galaxy Note 2, you've got a 1.6 gigahertz quad-core Exynos CPU, a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED HD display, an eight megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording, 3,100 milliamp hour removable battery out of the back of this device. 4G LTE connectivity on the Verizon version as well as every version in the US with the exception of T-Mobile's and then Android 4.1 with TouchWiz UI. So it's a battle between BlackBerry and Android, a battle between BlackBerry and Samsung, a lot of different ways. What's interesting about this, the manufacturer designs the hardware and the software, so it's an all-in-one solution, very similar to the iPhone 5 in a lot of respects. Design-wise, a little bit different here. 4.2-inch display, a little bit on the small side for what we're seeing as kind of the average smartphone size. 4.2 inches puts it right in line with the iPhone 5, puts it down there in the 4.3-inch display category, rather. I tried to say territory and category together. That did not work out so well. But on a smallish side, but the design is very nice, the build quality is good, and it kind of exudes that old school BlackBerry look and feel with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and power button up top, volume rocker on the side with your voice commands button, down at the bottom, nothing, camera on the back with the BlackBerry logo, HDMI port and micro USB charging port on the left side, and then you've got a device that's relatively pocketable. And that's one thing I do like about this device. They're really trying to prove that, you know what, it may be a 4.2-inch display, but it's a device that's really pocketable and feels good in the hand. So it's proof that you don't have to go all the way up to 5.5 inches to get a device with the killer specs. Now, that said, if you do want to go to 5.5 inches, you can take advantage of this one and get the killer specs. Beautiful HD display. It's got the S Pen. This thing is a revolutionary device all around with the S Pen. And then, of course, Android 4.1 got a ton of software goodies out of the box and build quality. Very typical Samsung here with the power button over on the right side, volume rocker on the left side, micro USB charging port at the bottom, two capacitive buttons, menu and back, and then you get your home button with a nice big Verizon logo down there in the front. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, like I said, camera button, and then, of course, your battery is in the back and it is removable actually on both of these devices so that's something to keep in mind now interestingly enough this is not a carrier device so you may expect some AT&T stuff or some T-Mobile stuff etc to come with this when you see it land in the states this is an unlocked device so keep in mind there's no carrier bloatware on this device yet there probably will be when it lands on the respective carriers in the states over here this is a Verizon branded note too so it does have some goodies out of the box of course all the Amazon stuff Amazon Amazon Kindle Amazon MP3 Audible got mobile hotspot my Verizon mobile Setup Wizard, and you have VZ Navigator, Visual Voicemail, View Dini, and then of course VPN Client uh, as well, which is a Samsung thing. But you can see up here out of the box, Android 4.1 running in full force. You got a notifications bar that's very typical Samsung with your shortcuts up top. This has some great software value ads we'll talk about in just a second. BlackBerry 10, though, a ground up revision of Research in Motion. Actually, you got caught me saying it just there. Blackberries, a ground up revision of Blackberries operating system. Huge improvements over BlackBerry 7, but it's based on a complete gesture navigation. So, for example, there's my hub, as you can see right there. And then, of course, I can scroll back and forth to access the hub, and then I can access my music if I want to as well. So here are my applications, typical BlackBerry stuff, but you'll see pictures, music, videos, StoryMaker, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Foursquare, a few things I've downloaded as well, Weather Channel, Google Talk, FlightAware, Reuters, 
and then some other goodies out of the box. So it's like my three panels of applications here. But when I open something up, it goes over into this area and it's all gesture based. So you'll notice when I open it up and when I want to get rid of it, I have to swipe up on the screen and I can either exit out or go back to something else. But I've got this little preview mode where I can kind of see what I'm doing before I move over. So if I want to see a preview of emails but don't want to show them entirely off, I can do that. But I've got all these different options that load up pretty quickly and pretty easily. So it's a ground up revision of BlackBerry 7. It's entirely based on gestures. Here's what the top part looks like. A little bit different, but it's all gesture based, like I said. So you can go into Hub, for example, and it shows all of my contact information, my phone dog account, which is what I have set up on this right now. BBM, this is kind of the hub for all of your communication. So BBM, text messages, email, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, anything that's gonna require kind of a written response is probably gonna go in your BlackBerry Hub. And from there, you can itemize it out by phone dog, email, for example, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or voice calls. So it's all in one spot and you access it just by moving right over there. Now, if I click on one of those emails or I click on a Twitter message, for example, we'll go here and he mentioned me in a tweet. I can scroll back and forth or I can go back to my hub, the Twitter area. And then down here I have back view profile, reply, reply all, and then some shortcuts down here at the bottom, which I can remove. Go back over here. Let's click on that again. View profile, reply, reply all or delete. And then when I'm done, I can swipe right back. So there's no real back button on this device, which is what makes it particularly interesting. And it's a huge, huge change from Research and Motion's previous build qualities and overall look and feel. So over here, you've seen Android a million times. You know how this thing runs. What I like about this, though, the software value adds that TouchWiz brings to the table. There are a ton of different customization choices. So if you're used to Android, but you're not used to TouchWiz, this is kind of like the souped up version of Android as far as I'm concerned. It's got some great features like home screen mode where you can customize between a standard mode and an easier layout. So if you're getting this for your parents, for example, it might be a little bit easier to get them hooked up on that and get them that layout. Also display down here where you can do wallpaper. You've got PageBuddy, which I find particularly useful. PageBuddy opens up whenever you plug in headphones, whenever you pull the S pin out, and it brings up this page that kind of says, hey, we know what you're doing. How about some solutions to help you? So you know what, we saw you pulled out the S pin. How about a note? How about a magazine? How about, and it gives you some recommended stuff down here at the bottom as well. But more than ever, particularly more than the Note 1, the S Pen really integrates with Android and the overall experience over here on the Note 2. So you may say, hey, I'll never use this. I'll tell you a couple of use cases where I find this particularly useful. One, I am forever signing contracts and NDAs and all kinds of different stuff as part of my job. It's incredibly easy to sign and send it right back on my device without printing it out and scanning it and returning it. It's just a mess and a waste of time. But you got your Note over here. S Pen's fantastic. A lot of different options here for multitasking. And I'm kind of glazing over this. If you want to know more, read the full review, but a lot of different features. Like I can double tap and open up, did not mean to do that. Double tap and open up my note. And I may be doing this wrong. Double tap. There it is. Hey there. So I can store notes on the fly if I want to just by double tapping. Then I've got a bunch of different S Pen choices I can do. The one that you saw was I can kind of crop something out like that and then bring it over into an email. I'm going to message, for example copy it to the clipboard, send it to somebody and say, hey, thought you might like this just by holding it down. So you can really do a ton of different stuff with this. And of course you have the multi-window feature as well on the Verizon one, though it is a little bit limited in the applications. I can open up messaging, I can open up internet, and then let's say, whoops, did not mean to do that, messaging, internet, and I can run them both simultaneously. So I've got the ability to do a lot of multitasking and thanks to a big 5.5 inch device, it's easy to do on this screen. So I can be searching via Google right now and I can say, hey there, which was what it's supposed to say. Hey there, which I'm terrible with swipe. We'll get into that in just a second. Also, while text messaging over here. So it's easy to use, incredibly functional. And it's one of those things you'll find yourself using it on a pretty regular basis. And when you're done, you can swipe right out of that and get rid of the little tab for multi-window. So some great features, it's Android, but it's Android on steroids over here and there's a lot to like in this package. You like these phones? I'm gonna take a second to thank our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you'll deal with unbiased sales representatives. They'll help you pick AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, or Verizon, whatever's easiest for you and best for you. They'll make sure you're hooked up when you walk out the door. Stay tuned for part two. We'll cover a ton more about the BlackBerry Z10 and the Note 2 in part two.